Um, so apps, I'm going to talk about apps today. <clears throat> Hope all of you have been enjoying the talk so far today. Of course, thank you for being here. Um, I have some really exciting things to share uh, with you. Um, I'm going to be showing you how we're going to make it easier and more accessible to experiment with mobile apps. I'll also be uh, taking questions at the end if we have enough time. So let's get started. Um, by, by the way, how many of you guys have a smartphone? Can I see by like a raise of hands? Cool, yeah, so you're in the right place. How many of you guys only have a smartphone, not a laptop, no tablet, only use your smartphone? Okay, cool, so we have some ways to go. <clears throat> so first, let's go over a few cool stats about mobile usage patterns today. 92% of all 18 to 29 year olds here in the United States own a smartphone. That's the highest in any age group and will continue to approach 100% for younger generations. Okay, so we started with the easy one. Uh, everyone here probably already knows this, and I, I mean, that's why you're here, to learn more about apps. But did you know that almost 20% of those young adults only use a smartphone? Not, not only is having a smartphone the status quo today, but we're relying on, them, on these devices more and more. Things that we would normally wait until we get to a laptop, we can now do on our phones. It's really easy, easy to, to rely on my phone. I don't have to wait until I can pull on my laptop or get to my desk. In fact, I actually did most of these slides on my phone while I was uh, on my way to work, at the gym, uh, in bed, or waiting in line at the grocery store. So, and, and it turned out pretty okay, I think. So almost 20% of 18 to 29 year olds only use their smartphone. That, that, that's pretty impressive. Now, this stat is crazy. So compare that to 12% of adults, that's ages 29 and up, that only use their smartphones. They don't own a computer or a tablet. The only computer that they have is the one in their pocket. And that's their primary means of access to the internet. And, and how do all these people spend their time? 90% of the time that we spend on mobile devices is spent within apps. These are native apps, largely iOS and Android, uh, that range from entertainment to social and communication apps to commerce. Now, let's look at the factors that we just talked about, like age group, how many people only use their smartphones, or the time spent within apps, and how that impacts businesses on Shopify. Last year, we announced that 61% of all online storefront visits on Shopify came from mobile devices. This year, we've continued to see that number jump to almost 70%. So here's something we're trying to figure out. For, for commerce, mobile conversions have, have grown a tiny bit to one, just above 1.5%, but desktop conversions remain steady at around 4%. That's 2.5% above mobile. It, it sounds like we, we have a bit of a problem for, for commerce, mobile conversions are significantly lower than desktop. We've already seen that mobile usage is higher and growing, and that smartphones are starting to become our primary devices, if they aren't already. So why is it that mobile is not converting at least as well as desktop? This doesn't quite make sense. Well, this is what we're trying to figure out every day at Shopify. We think the answer here is native mobile apps. They present an immersive and magical buying experience, Native apps load faster and are more responsive, and they give us access to phone features like notifications, location, and the camera. Of course, they can also reduce checkout friction by offering simpler payment options. Over the last few years, we've seen that the best experiences feel very personalized, with a lot of context like who I am, what I like, what I usually do, and what's the last thing I did. Let me paint you a little picture. The, the year is 2007, that's 10 years ago. It, it's a rainy Friday night and my friends are, are over. We're, we're hungry and we want to grab dinner, come back and watch a movie. We, we hop into my car and turn on the radio. We, we end up switching through a bunch of different stations just to find the right song. It becomes like a pretty eventful drive to dinner with friends arguing, we're poking fun at each other, and, and some, some, someone actually starts crying. And now we can skip forward to today. We can keep it really simple. I can connect my Spotify and hit play. 
It already knows my taste and suggests playlists that it knows I'll love. So we didn't make dinner reservations yet since we couldn't agree on a restaurant. Not a problem. We quickly Google for a place, call them to, uh, to ask how long they're open and if they can see us soon. And finally, I give them my name uh, to book a table. So there's a fa fairly uh, number of steps there. So today, I can actually use apps like Reserve or Open Table. They recommend places similar to ones we've enjoyed before, only showing places that are open and close by. And of course, they can see us soon. Again, they have full context. I can make a reservation right from my phone with one tap. When we arrive at the restaurant, they greet us by name and see us right away. After, after we finished dinner, we, we hit up the local Blockbuster, and, and so remember how hard it was to design out a radio station? So now we start roaming through the aisles aimlessly for a while, and we each find a movie we think might be okay. So now we can, skipping forward to today, we actually just head straight home uh, from dinner, open up Netflix on my phone, and because, again, Netflix has full context, like my browsing patterns, things I've watched in the past, it tells me movies that it knows I'll enjoy. And of course, it's my house, so I get to pick the movie. So all this to say that context is actually really important for creating a great user experience. Imagine this, you have a retail store. A customer visits for the first time and you help them find what they're looking for. You grab their payment details and help them check out. It's a great experience. Over time, they become a more and more loyal customer and visit you a handful of times. You would want to offer a more personalized experience every time, suggesting products they like, remembering their details like sizes, address, what they bought last time, and offer them a way to be more involved with your brand. Mobile apps make it really easy for us to have this context and deliver these magical experiences to our customers. Ultimately, we see this leading to customers being more loyal, spending more, and purchasing more frequently. Kyle, a co-founder of Chubby Shorts, their Shopify merchant that sells radically patterned and designed shorts, so they found that uh, the Chubby's mobile app is one of the best and most unique ways to engage with their most loyal customers. In fact, mobile apps, their mobile app has helped them continue to grow their business, and they see conversion and average revenue per session on the app double that of the mobile web. So last year, we updated our mobile buy SDKs with Android Pay and customer login making it possible to build more personalized mobile experiences. We've seen some great apps from merchants using those SDKs. Here's the OVO app. Because they know their audience is largely on mobile, they offer iOS and Android apps. They're beautifully designed, allow super fast browsing, and create a simpler checkout experience. Here's another example. Zendaya is an actress and singer, and she started a brand called Dea by Zendaya. Let's walk to the app. It's focused on immersive content with the newsfeed, presents different looks and outfits, and even lets you listen to her songs with the radio right in the app. Lastly, there's the shopping tab, where, where you can browse and purchase products. She knows how to target her audience really well and provide an engaging app where commerce becomes secondary. We, we love this approach. And just like those, there are many other amazing apps built using our current mobile bias to case. And with that, today I'd like to announce our new 3.0 mobile bias case for iOS and Android. Let's see what that involves. These new SDKs are built using our incredibly powerful GraphQL storefront APIs that you heard about earlier on the main stage. This adds a ton of flexibility and makes the SDKs very simple to use with a single request for any query. You can now make complex queries asking for what you want. For example, today, if we want to get all our collections and the products within them, it gets really messy. Uh, we have to juggle a handful of requests and responses. With these new SDKs, we can just pass along the query to do this in one easy request and also get the data back as a single payload. Yeah, maybe we should applaud for that. <clears throat> so recently, there was a study done by Ericsson to find the amount of cognitive load or stress associated with different things, different tasks. So watching a horror movie is quite a bit more stressful than, than waiting in line at the store. You know what's more stressful than watching like the Texas Chainsaw Massacre or The Exorcist? A slow mobile experience. 
it, it's more stressful than watching a horror movie or even doing math. Speed is everything, especially on mobile devices. Since we're only making requests for data that we need, we get back a reduced payload, and we can replace multiple requests with just one, leading to lower latency. That means these new SDKs are blazing fast. Lastly, we've heard from our merchants and partners that search is a core element of designing any simple mobile experience. Mobile is not like desktop, of course. On mobile, users have limited screen real estate and an even shorter attention span. So now using these new SDKs, you can also search for products using tags, filters, titles, and other attributes. These new SDKs will be open source, just like our previous ones, and they ship with a brand new sample app that will work right out of the box to give you a starter mobile app for any store. We'll continue to support them and add new features in our 3.0 mobile buy SDKs, and they're available next month. I'm really excited to see the types of apps that we built with our new SDKs. They're, they're best used for the highly customized and engaging apps, like the ones I, I talked about, where commerce is a piece of the experience. However, we, we've noticed there's some friction to getting started with our SDKs. Only a tiny fraction of our merchants actually ship an app. After talking to tens and thousands of merchants, we found that our SDKs can present a very steep learning curve, require upfront time and capital investment. We want to give you and our merchants the tools to, to see the value of native apps faster and before committing to building custom apps. Can you imagine a world where you don't have to build apps from scratch? We've seen this work really well for creating online stores using our online store builder and the online store channel and want to bring the same simplicity for native mobile apps. This enables our partners and merchants to quickly create apps without any prior technical expertise or writing any code. Let's take a look at how this works. We have two themed templates to start from, and each of these themes are composed of screens and UI components. A merchant can start off by selecting a theme, then use their existing Shopify content for things like the featured banner, collections, products, images, etc. They can set their styling preferences to make sure the app carries the brand identity across through fonts, through, through things like fonts, colors, spacing, and alignment. Each UI component can be configured to change how information is displayed and styled to change visual appearance. The mobile store builder lets merchants create native iOS and Android apps without writing any code. They work with your Shopify, so things like products, collections, and inventory, uh, inventory setup just work. It comes with a full set of built-in features, including two starting themes that are customizable, push notifications, and Apple and Android Pay for merchants using Shopify payments. Here's an example from Pure Vita. They're a Shopify merchant that sells handmade bracelets from Co Costa Rica. They, they chose a theme to start. They added their customization preferences, their content, and once we publish their products and collections, we have native iOS and Android apps for them. You can browse through featured collections, products, navigate to special collections, select product variants, and easily add to cart or checkout. After working with Griffin, the CEO of Pure Vita, Pure Vita Bracelets, he found that using our new mobile store builder, they were able to easily create mobile apps and experiment with their growth and marketing strategy for this new channel. At a glance, here's what this looks like to create an app using the new mobile store channel. We guide you through every single step from setting up developer accounts, choosing your theme and customization preferences, providing design assets like app icons and fonts, to seeing a live preview of the app, and finally, submitting and publishing on the Google Play and Apple App Stores. So, that's our uh, new mobile store builder for native iOS and Android apps. The mobile store channel with the mobile store builder I just showed you will be available in private beta for Plus Merchants starting next month. You can learn more by getting in touch with your MSM or your Merchants MSM or your partner manager. 
Last year, we had one request of all of our partners, and, and that was to get native apps for every Shopify merchant that wanted one. And, and you've done a great job with hundreds of merchants selling through new custom mobile apps. But we realize it's, it's difficult, so now we've tried to make it a little bit easier. At Shopify, our goal is to, to build a platform so that all of our partners have a foundation to focus on building the world-class experiences on top of that. I want everyone here to recognize that the foundation is only a piece and a fraction of the whole picture to be successful on native mobile. Today, I announced two products for that foundation, our new mobile buy SDKs and the mobile store channel. However, merchants continue to need your help to build on top of this foundation and be successful by focusing on all these other areas like app discovery, engagement, conversion, and retention. Together, let's do for mobile stores as we're doing for online. So that's all I had for you today. Please come visit Brent or myself at Office Hours to chat more. And if you have any questions, feel free to ask them. I'll also be outside afterwards. We don't have enough time to take questions. So thank you. <laughs>